On this week's Ludini Rock and Roll Circus podcast, we're going to tell you all about Corey Taylor and 19 other totally amazing rock and metal vocalists of the 21st century that you probably aren't even aware of because when you think of great singers your head is what back with the robert plants and the ian gillens and the ronnie dios and the bruce dickinson's and all those guys they're great but it's the 21st century and there are some amazing uh, uh vocalists out there that are fronting kick-ass bands and we're going to tell you all about it right now get ready to rock out with your talk out it's the ludini rock and roll circus Moms and dads, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome back to the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. I am your ringmaster, Lou Lombardi, a.k.a. Ludini. And do we have a show for you tonight? We are talking about 20. We're going to give you 20 because you know how it is with us. If you've been following the show for any amount of time, if we say 10, we mean 15. Probably. If we say (laughs) 7, we mean 12. You know, now so, that we said 20, we're going to be 37. 20, that might be. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> but we got the full power trio in full form tonight. Uh, Keith the Hawk Hawkins is in the house with us uh, live from New Orleans. We've got Lily Von Six and Ludini here from uh, the from Guntown, Cannesburg, Pennsylvania. So it strap that. in and suit up. And lock down because we are ready to kick you in the freaking ass with some great music tonight. First of all, a couple of, uh, couple of let's say we got to pay the light bill, right? Wolf's Customs. Why do I want to say about Wolf's Customs? Because there is no reason to get out there as things open up to get up on a stage to be playing with the same boring looking guitar that the last three bands play. You know what's going on, right? This isn't going to change, right? Lily, Lily does shows. You get these band, what these shows with like five, six bands. At least three minimum, and you got to find some way to distinguish yourself. I mean, I mentioned Corey Taylor. I mean, what does Slipknot do? They wear the wild costumes and everything like that. Something. So one of the things you can do is instead of going on with this, you know, the sunburst guitar or whatever that the last five bands had, you can get a custom paint job. Hollow Flash. He does a lot of different things. Uh, Chris Thunderwolf Dotson at Wolf's Customs He will suit. He will fix you right up. You'll have a totally a. Bad Badass looking guitar, bass, drum set, whatever you want. And uh, you're going to stand out. You're going to be able to put on a way better show. And you're just going to feel better. So check them out. Go to wolfscustoms.online. And, of course, Rock Rage Radio. RockRageRadio.com. Uh, they've been carrying the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus for, like, like we're, I think we're, like, into two years now. Yes. Uh, I don't know how they put up with us, but they do. <laughs> John and Gigi are just wonderful people. They are dedicated to great uh, music. So go to RockRageRadio.com. Download the app, and you can hear great music all the time. We're on there as well, of course, on Sundays. Um, and um, that's the main stuff I want to mention. The other thing I want to say it, before we, I introduce the and, and Keith and Lily can jump in here is guys, this is really important reviews. Just like if you go to your local place and you and they you know they do a good job, they fix your car or they give you a good pizza or they clean your teeth real nice. What massage. do you do? We give them a good massage. You have a good chiropractor, whatever. What do you do? You whip out that device of yours that's in your back pocket or in your purse or whatever or you know in your bra, Lily, um, and you. And you get on Google and you give an awesome review. For podcasts, you don't go to Google. You go to iTunes. And go to iTunes and pull up the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. There's a space there for reviews. And please give us a review. Here's how serious we are and how grateful we are for her reviews. On if From now, this we're doing this on the 23rd of March. On April 20th, which is about a month from now, if you have given a review... You're going to be entered into a contest, and we're going to do a drawing to give away a free Ludini Rock and Roll Circus t-shirt on the show for 
April 20th. So when you do that review, whip out that device of yours and either take a screenshot with it or hold it up to the computer and take a picture of it and email it to Lou at LouLombardiMusic.com. That is Lou at LouLombardiMusic.com. And that is going to put you in a drawing for a Ludini Rock and Roll Circus t-shirt. Uh, we appreciate those reviews. Go out and give. And we can't just hit the five star thing. We do appreciate that. But you got to like type, say something nice. Why you like the show? Why, why you thought it was cool? Whatever. And you can review any show you want. You can go back and review something from a year ago if you like that. Whatever. But do that. Send it to take your send your screenshot and everything to Lou at LouLombardiMusic.com. And we're going to pick a winner on the 20th of April. All right, had to get that all out, and we will mention that later on for you latecomers. Uh, we'll bring that up again a little bit later on. Uh, I have, as I said, Keith the Hawk Hawkins in the house. Uh, Keith, anything going on? How, what you gigging now? What's going on? I'm gigging Friday at Four House in Metairie, Louisiana. God damn it. And if you want to be there, all the cool kids are going to hang out, and we're going to just have a nice little you know, jam. And afterwards, there's going to be milk and cookies and maybe a slumber party. I don't know. A tea party. Yay. Wow. <laughs> I, hope, I, hope to play, I hope to play well. I can always guarantee that, but sometimes I get on a roll. That's why they call me what, what's What's the band you're playing with again? What's the name again? It's Ugly. It's Ugly. And um, we have Lily V6 in the house. Uh, thank you. And, I, we just, I just had a show. And you just had a show. Why don't you go ahead and give us a little... Um, at the Subalpine in Turtle Creek, I do my monthly uh, Lily Six's Live Saturdays, and we had uh, one of the heavier shows this past Saturday. Uh, four bands, and um, wow, I'm totally going to mess them up because, because I've already messed them up once, and I'm sure they're real happy about that. So let me find who they are, but they we do do them once a month, except for April. I'm not doing one in April due to the fact that they are completely booked in April for shows, so that is not happening. But the, the bands were Shattered Soul, The Creature, Grave Birth, and Strangle the Witness, all amazing bands from the Pittsburgh area. Uh, did a great job, was a great crowd, happy about it, can't wait till May. So there's that. And boom goes the dynamite. <laughs> and uh, your show is? Hot Licks with Lily Six, Thursdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. And I am bombarded with interviews, so you'll have an interview on every show for the next, like, two months. <laughs> also, guys, if you do listen on Rock Rage, you know, send them a quick uh, email or make a little post on their page on Facebook and say, oh, we love the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. You know, make, a, make sure they know that they're not wasting their time and their money with us. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, guys, so we're we're getting into this tonight. We are talking mm-hmm. about just, just so many. That's why I said tw- uh, twenty because there's just like mm-hmm. it's insane. There's it's so huge. many great ones, so many great ones. And so, uh, as always, I uh, am as the ringleader here, the ringmaster. I am going to bringing out my first uh, 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 performing on trampoline in a uh, in a tutu and a purple wig is uh, Mr. Keith Hawkins, who will fir- talk about the first singer that he would like to speak of. It's a circus. <laughs> like I said before in the uh, pregame show, we'll say, some of these people started in the 90s and just steamrolled their way on through. This guy's voice is just it's unstoppable. He's never sounded bad. I've seen him twice live. He sounded great. Like I said, this band's been around for a while probably don't get the credit they're due but i mean and i guarantee neither one of you have it on our list if you do i'll buy you a beer brandon boyd from incubus is one of the better singers i've heard in the modern era going back to the 90s even in today they're still putting out records dude sounds phenomenal and just never a bad note comes out of him i seen him when they were on the odds fest on a freaking stage in a parking lot and they were they're still rolling today that guy the band is stellar and not no pun intended but uh it's just one of those things where he's just he's a phenomenal singer and i think that's like like i said going from the 90s career all the way up into the modern day still has the pipes man all right all right that's that's an excellent pick uh lily is on her phone she's texting her boyfriend no i am not (laughs) lily come on i am fact checking actually can you please be professional please Really? <laughs> Are you joking yeah. me, Mr. I can't even pronounce fucking anything? Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Mm. Friendly. We're joking around. Now calm down. You um, know that you struck a nerve, Lou, when you get a chick to say the F word wow. right on the air. Oh, wow. I'm really sorry. I was just playing around. 
Anyway, Dino Jalusic, I don't know if you guys remember who that is. Who is? Um, he's Dino Jalusic. He's a Croatian rock singer who formed the band Animal Drive in 2012. He was doing all those amazing covers um, by Roxette, um, Skid Row, and all that. His voice is just like so super whaley, and I love it. But he's also in the band with, um, gosh, I can't even remember his name. That's what I was trying to fact check. But he's in the band Dirty Shirley right now. Again, he has an amazing voice. Oh, yeah, I know the band. Yeah. yeah. Um, George Lynch. George that's Lynch, who I yeah. meant. Um, but he was also in Trans Siberian Orchestra. Worked with Gus G, Mike Mangini, um, Dean Castronovo Mangini. from um, Wow well, Dead Daisies. Um, but he's um, he was born in 1992, so super young, accomplished oh, he's guy. A baby. He's a tiny little thing. He's a tiny little creature. But he's, he's a little creature. <laughs> um, when he did the the look by Roxette, that's what really caught my ear because, as we know, I'm a fan of uh, Roxette. So uh, gets me every time. Goosebumps. But he, uh, he also plays musical instruments, and he has a degree, a master's, master's degree from the Academy of Music he got in 2020. So he is super accomplished. Good An picks. An amazing, amazing vocalist. Good, good picks. I want to mention somebody that I think this, <laughs> this guy came out in the 90s and then kind of like took a little break for a while and then reemerged in a little bit later in the 90s and on through the 2000s with the Devin Townsend Project. This, of course, is Devin Garrett Townsend, born May 5th, 1972. So he's not quite as young as your guy. No. But, uh, 20 years older. Actually. He is on my, to me. He's on my favorite uh, Steve Vai album. That's where he was uh, first got noticed. Um, but... Uh, in, uh, uh, when the century turned, started really hitting it hard with the Devin Townsend project, which is uh, it's it's very indescribable. Um, <laughs> sorry, it's a podcast, and I'm trying to describe to you exactly what they do. But Devin has is the kind of singer who can do that, like just big, beautiful, melodic type thing and then the next second be like ah, like just like he can do it all yeah just totally like really kind of heavy uh singing as well and very intricate music oh boy i don't i mean you know he played with steve i so you know he's got that kind of frank zappa kind of influence in terms of the way that he structures the songs the songs are very difficult to sing these are not just your normal kind of you know four on the floor rock and roll songs or your typical kind of metal kind of metal thing uh very intricate uh counterpoint kind of melodies uh can, I mean, he's got the set of pipes where he can really hold those notes really really long go to youtube and just look at any of his videos um but he's one of these guys that i think a lot of people just kind of forget about uh, because it's like it's not like mainstream. I don't even think like Octane and those stage Liquid Metal are playing him or anything like that. It's a very kind of like you need to seek him out and listen to it. Um, but um, just just an amazing uh, vocalist. D he's done all kinds of things. Strapping Young Lad founded Heavy Debbie Records. Just been a you know a thing in the music business uh, for for a little bit. But he is really out there in the in the 21st century, just making killer. Uh, music, great vocalist. Keith, my next, me, my next brother. You talking to me? You talking, talking to, me? to me? All right, so I'm gonna go with uh, another guy that I think that probably don't get the credit he deserves. Really good front man. Uh, first two albums of this band I thought were killer. Uh, no pun intended. Once again, it's Brandon Flowers from the Killers, who's a really good front man and has a very good range the band the hot fuss album is really good that's just rock and roll man i mean it's just it's just straight ahead it's got some good danceable grooves cool lyrics very good hooks and the guy just you know can fluctuate his voice up and down and but also has that look he looks like a rock star and he flaunts it up on stage and they are one of them bands that i think that are really kind of maybe get lost in the shuffle with there's so many bands out there but it's just a, a I think that Brandon Flowers is a really, a really good rock front man with a really good voice, and that's sometimes that's, that's rare. I mean, he's no Fred Durst, but what are you gonna do? Uh, I think he's uh, also got a really unique voice. Like I know it's them when he starts to sing, so that's exactly that band has a cool sound. And like I said, they're not like this heavy, heavy band. I mean, like a lot of the list I went through today, just like trying to do some research on this stuff. 
if somebody's bands, I'm not going to give opinions on bands that I either don't understand a word you're saying. I don't give a shit how good your voice is or I've never heard of before. I have no dog in that fight. And I'm just going to go with people that I know that I respect in the music I like. But I don't want to I can't tell you about the chick from fucking Nightwish because I don't know nothing about it. <laughs> right. The chick from Nightwish. <laughs> I'm not going to I'm not going to go and like try to like guess because, you know, if you want that done. Then, uh, you know, if you need a surgery, I have a hacksaw in the back of the shed. We can do that later, too. And I'm a lot cheaper than the doctor. The chicken heart. Like the chicken heart. <laughs> night Five witch, bitch. Heart. At night witch, bitch. Crazy. Uh, Lily Von Six. Um, my next one is a chick. Speaking of chicks, uh, we're going to go with Amy Lee. Chicks with dicks. Um, I love dicks. <laughs> Amy Lee, I, uh, yes, Evan did have two EPs in 1998 and 1999, but it wasn't until 2000 when they became known with the EP Origin. Um, she is the co-founder and vocalist of the band. Um, she has also participated in many, many, many other musical projects, including, including Nightmare Revisited and Muppets, the Green Album, which I thought was pretty cool. Cool. Because I'm super into the Muppets. Anybody who does a Muppets thing is like... I think right everybody's... There pretty much done a Muppets thing. I'm okay with that. But um, even Fred Durst? She's on, maybe, <laughs> unfortunately. She's on many, many of like the top vocalist lists, um, as she should be. I think she's super haunting. She's beautiful. She's got a very different voice. I mean, she's obviously screaming early 2000s with her stuff, but she continues to do so. Um, she was Rock Goddess of the Year, and um, she did take classical piano lessons for nine years as well, so she's just not voice. She's also... Um, instrumentalist too. Um, wow. I, th- I just think sh- uh, she gets the attention of everyone in the room when she sings and appears like glitter. So. She say got she's got charisma. 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 Uh, there's an old there's an old saying too that says you know you want to kick her out of bed for eating potato chips you know so that's a good thing too. <laughs> so. I'm gonna mention somebody that um, you probably don't know his name but you definitely know the band and it's Luke Spiller. Of the, strut, of the struts. This guy is everything that a rock singer should be. He's just got a, and he's got an amazing voice. I am a, I would study voice. I just had my voice less than a couple hours ago. And let me tell you what this guy can hit. Right, Keith? Jump in on this, Keith. Just jump yeah, in. I was I going mean, to. So that, was my next, that was my next pick. So obviously you're looking at my list. Can you see it from here? <laughs> Stop peeking. That's the problem. I've seen this band twice live. I've seen them actually here when they opened. They were like the headlining band. I've seen them open for the Foo Fighters. This guy is the band. I mean, not taking anything away from the instrumentalists in the band. They're solid. Without this guy, he is the total package. He is Freddie Mercury light, if you will. And he is what a rock singer should, you know, portray. He has that, 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 charisma on stage if you will and he has the whole yeah he has the whole package man he has the look the he sound and uh, <laughs> he looks like something out of 19 you know 64 but he sounds like freddie mercury and he has like that just that whole vibe like i said he's and that's it's rare in today's age to have a band that has like that you know that charismatic throwback from because everything today is so pop oriented as shit so we're going to just stick with the the real bands. Bands are actually making good music. And yeah, he's definitely got it. He's definitely, he would be on my list. He was actually my next, my next pick on the list. But uh, yeah, that's, that's, a, you hit the nail on the head on that one, Chief. Yeah. I, I just, oh man, when I heard those guys, I was knocked the F out. I was like, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Very straight ahead music. It could be like a T Rex throwback meets yeah. like the Queen Queen frontman type style. I mean, he he could have easily when I seen him open for the Foo Fighters, they did under pressure and he nailed the Freddie Mercury parts. He could have been Adam Lambert in Queen and probably did just as good a job. Yeah. Um Yeah, he's uh I just just listen to She's in Love with the Camera. Just listen to what he can do vocally on that. And it's a and the and the thing the thing with I like about them too is like the songs are all like really. Ca- you can listen to the whole album. This is one of those bands too that you can play the whole freaking record, and like it's all like that's good. Uh, that one's good too. Uh, it's pretty good too. We've done it. We've been over here partying and played that whole record. Be like, no, nah, that one's good. That one's good. Too. Like they're all great. Um, go go ahead, Keith. Uh, since I stole your thunder, pick another one. 
Or I'm going to go with a little bit more of a, uh, it said, I don't know when this band came out, but when I first heard them, they were interesting. And then they got more interesting. They're little. Oh my. I don't always have to agree with your politics, but like your style, you know, okay. Palmarilla. But um, there's a, there's a uniqueness to this guy's voice. So sometimes the best voice doesn't have to be, you know, unique. Doesn't mean the best voice. I think this guy has a very interesting voice. And I think that as soon as another one, as Logan said before, it's like one of those bands when you put it on, you know who it is. I'm going to go with uh, Serge Tankian from System of a Down. The guy has an interesting voice. Uh, like He has a range. I mean, he can sound operatic, then he can scream, and then he just does a kind of a middle-of-the-road thing. Um, the band's interesting. I think that they make interesting music. Um, that, but, yeah, that's it's one of those singers where I could probably listen to the first freaking line he says. I'll be like, that's System of Down. I know he did some things for... Uh, some actually some horror miniseries and stuff. He's done some like uh, some soundtrack work too with uh, with horror movies and some miniseries work. But uh, he definitely has an interesting voice, and I wouldn't you know would never say talk shit on him for that ability to do that. I mean that's just one of those things where got to give credit where credits due. Like I said, I don't have to always agree with what you're saying, but I mean it's it's interesting. Uh, interesting music, what an interesting voice. Also, he's, he and I are born in the same year, 1967. It's a good year. <laughs> well, then that, there it does. There it goes, right there. I mean, that's that puts him, that probably should be number one. We should probably just stop the rest of the show. <laughs> so what do you got, Lily? Um, I do want to let people know I switched over to Rock Rage Live because nobody was on the yeah, Inner Circle. What's going on Inner Circle, so people? You I switched people over to Live. On me. God <laughs> so, damn. There are people watching on Rock Rage Live, so I'm over that's there fine. right now. Who's, right. who's watching? You want to say uh, we got Chris Thunderwolf, Chris and, Thunderwolf. and Raven. Uh, 434, the band who I have had on the show many we times, love you guys. is on. And John Amaro is also watching. John, you rock! So, <laughs> so that's why I switched. Go to LombardiMusic.com, and you can get in the Inner Circle. So go ahead. Okay. Uh, the next one, I'm not sure if you guys know the name or not, but Shane Connery Volk. Um, he's... Uh, Shane Connery. Shane Connery, Shane Connery, vocalist and primary songwriter for Canadian rock band from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada, called What Bad Son. Love, love, love this band. They have toured with Buck Cherry, Three Days Grace, and were chosen open for both Def Leppard, or not both, but Def Leppard, and Judas Priest, and the Rolling Stones on the Western Canada dates of their shows. So um, the reason I even noticed him is because you played a song here just randomly on Spotify one night, and it was the Talking Heads psycho killer but it wasn't the talking heads i'm like this is not the talking heads who is this this was them and it was amazing his voice is super unique um i don't know if it's for everybody but it it, i'm sorry i just think he's got a beautiful voice he's also a comic book artist which is kind of cool and um i don't know it whenever i hear the covers it makes me want to check out the rest of the songs rest of the songs are just as amazing so i would definitely uh give this guy um a look at a listen to what have you and um, i actually like their version of psycho killer better uh, yeah. Than the talking heads. I do too. <laughs> I do too. I do too. It's much more rock. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. very hard. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> um, I want to talk about one of my absolute favorite singers ever, ever in the entire world. And no, it's not somebody from the 70s or 80s. It is Jay Buchanan, originally from the group Buchanan and eventually formed uh, Rival Sons with guitarist Scott Holiday. Jay's is I when I hear Jay I go like okay this is like if Jim Morrison and Bono had a baby so that's those are two like polar opposite kind of singers but what if you listen to Jay I'm telling you that that that's kind of what he's got going on very unique voice insanely flexible killer range just throws his entire self uh, into everything uh, he does vocally just Unbelievable. He's a great front man. Uh, I got to see Rival Sons a couple of years ago at the Rex. Rest in peace. And um, I don't know what I'm more saying. If you don't know the band, again, this is a band that doesn't get, I believe, deserves Enough way credit. They don't more get no play. Credit. Way, one of the most, way more play. One of the most underrated bands, like, thinking in, in the scene today. That's a band that probably has that throwback sound, but just good musicians. Great vocals, and that, yeah, that band should hopefully stay around for a long yeah, time. Yeah, I hope they keep, I mean, I know that they're not, like, you know, setting the world on fire, but they do have a core audience, so so Scott and Jay, if you're listening, please keep putting out records. So, Jay Buchanan, go ahead, Keith, what do you got? Again, I'm going to go with some of the people that maybe are considered the old guard in this, but they're still rolling today, whether it's with, you know, Pussifer, whether it's the Perfect Circle, 
or whether it's his main day job, we'll, we'll call it in tool. Maynard James Keene is still rolling, still has a great voice. Just seen him last year here in New Orleans, and they're phenomenal. Uh, the guy is just some of the deepest lyrics I've ever heard. I think you have that actually, you have to have a college degree to understand some of the songs. Um, but he's a very interesting guy. I've ever seen somebody like his documentary on him. He makes his own wine, which is pretty cool. And uh, the guy just has an all around great vibe as a front man. Now, can you see him on stage? He, has the, he don't have the flamboyant moves of the Luke Spillers of the world, but he, because you really can't see what the hell he's doing because I can't see him at all. But that's just this one of those things where he just delivers that night after night. Just sounds perfect, man. I mean, he has a unique voice. Another one that has a unique voice. I know who exactly who it is, no matter what project he's singing in. And he is a you know sometimes overly opinionated guy. Some of his lyrics are a little bit crazy. But uh, like I said, he is an interesting singer and I think a legendary singer and with a, and it, it tool was the legendary band to me and the, all the other projects he does. And he still has the pipes, man, to, to hit all those notes and he does his thing all the time. So Maynard James Keenan is my next pick. So good job. Good pick. Keep it rolling. I met him when he had his wine tour <laughs> Nice in Miami. How was he? Um, very quiet. He does. He was not chatty at all. Not gonna lie. Really? Okay. He was kind of just sign and go. <laughs> <laughs> kind of how that went. And Lily V six. Next on my list is Orianthe Penny Panagaris. Um, two thousand nine. Um, as a vocalist, Australian musician, singer, songwriter, who rehearsed in two thousand and nine <laughs> with Michael Jackson. Uh, so she's a super. For, first and foremost, she is a super guitar player. That's yeah. like her. That's how she yeah, got I, into I the thing. I just realized her recently that she does sing. I yeah. didn't realize that. She um, had a debut single, according to you, peaked at number three in Japan, which people would say is pop, but because she plays guitar in it, I'm going to say it borderlines the rock there. So that's why I'm going to count it in here. She's got a phenomenal voice. Um, 12 greatest female electric guitarists. Um, Mostly she's won guitar awards, but I think she should win some vocal awards, too, because she's right up there with the other girls of the era. So um, I just think maybe she should probably release some more vocal songs. Um, but I think um, I don't think her songs are like another like whiny girl love song. I think it's like a kick ass like a few songs. Well, when I, what I saw of her on YouTube, she, she was doing like some she classic do, rock yeah. stuff. And I, 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 have to, I wish I could remember the top of my head. I have to go back to my uh, YouTube uh, history. And I was I was gobsmacked because I was like, oh, she sings and it was really good. Uh, you know, you guys are familiar, and maybe you guys are. Are you Keith? Are you familiar with Samantha Fish? Yeah, you know Samantha Fish. Yeah, she, re- she, re- she recorded some stuff here in New Orleans. Yeah, I'd put, it, I'd put. Actually, what, at a studio, I, I recorded the Black Laurel CD. She recorded a couple tunes yeah, with that guy. I would that put, produced that one. Okay, I would put. Um, her like what I saw of Orianthe, I'd put it in the same kind of things with Samantha Fish does. Yeah. In fact, I think a Samantha Fish song played after that. Um, yeah, that's a, that that that's a great pick, Lily. Cool. I like my ladies. My ladies love the ladies. <laughs> oh, he likes the ladies. Um, okay, I'm gonna pick one. I hope this isn't on Keith's list. It's but, okay if it is. Really, trust uh, me. okay. But I want to talk about Aaron. Oh, excuse me, Annie Aaron Clark better known as St. Vincent. Um, this nah, I didn't is, pick that one. Okay, this is very different kind of music. Um, she's a, like Orianti, like a really killer guitar player, very unique sound, amazing songwriter, has a very, very cool, um, uh, kind of, almost more like in the Kate Bush kind of uh, singing kind of voice, very unique, very standout, definitely more in the alternative, but still a lot of really kick-ass guitar work on it and stuff like that. I uh, got to watch uh, her Austin City Limits uh, uh, performance this week, and it was just really knocked out. What they do uh, live is just absolutely killer, and she's note for note, spot on, no auto-tune, just, just kick-ass. Um and she's not too hard on the eyes either. Yeah, well, yeah. You know, that, 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 that'll tell. St. Vincent. That's, that's another artist I've seen on, uh, I think it was later with Jules Holland. It was one of those things where I didn't know who the hell it was, and then she was on there with her band, and it just sounded killer. Out, but it struck my interest. That's a, that's a show that I think launches or gets a lot of people know. Well, you know what I, we should do? Here's what, Here would be a great podcast. Top 20 Jules Holland performances. 
That's where I discovered royal blood. And I, really I, like I, royal too, blood I, I heard a lot of stuff on there I never heard before. That's that's a good. So so that might be something for down the road. Uh, whose turn is it, Keith? What, what do you got? I'm going to go with the little uh, person that's no longer with us. I think that uh, I don't really, you know, I'll just be straight up. I don't really like the band that he's known for. It's kind of cheesy to me. I mean, sorry if you're a fan, but I later on he worked with SDP. I did like Chester Bennington's voice, God Rest Your Soul. I think that uh, songs like In the End or, you know, and, you know, any of the songs on that record, really, I, there's something about his voice that I think that matched Mike Shinoda's rapping and just that, that rawness to it. There's a raw quality to his voice, I think, is just unmistakable. So whenever you hear Chester Bennington sing, in a lot of times it's probably coming from a dark place, unfortunately, but uh, like you got to get that out. And he... Uh, he belts it out pretty good, and I think there's, like I said, sometimes there's a little gravel in his voice, and I like that about his, you know, the quality of his voice, that that, that, that texture. And, but like I said, I'm not a big Linkin Park fan. I mean, they did well for themselves. But then he went on. I never really heard him with SDP. I'm sure he did a good job. Uh, but Chester Bennington is one who I think that is a person I'm just listening to the vocals, and I hear that instead of the whole package. So I'm going to go with him as my next pick. Cool. Good one. Good one. Good one. What do you got, Lily V6? Um, I'm going to go with one that I just thought of while we were sitting here since I'm talking about cool. female go for it. rockers. And you just got into this. The band Plush, Mariah ah, Formica, yeah. who is their new... Or not These new, are we, we lads, or we late young ladies. Under, yeah. all, un, all under 21. Um, basically, her voice is like has been called the future of rock. She They are trying to bring rock back to the forefront with an all-female band. They are all amazing. Uh I would call them hard rock. I would definitely put them in that category. Oh, heck yeah, yeah, yeah. And Lizzie Hale herself said that Mariah is definitely the future of rock. So, amazing. I got to talk to the guitarist and the bass player. The super cute girls. You could tell they're super young. They, But they have, um, they all have the same sort of um, influences in like Judas Priest and... Um, Randy Rhodes and, you know, all the ones that you wouldn't expect a 19-year-old to pick. So it's they're like the real deal, and they're amazing. And I can't wait to see them live someday. Who is this? This is Plush. It's a new all-girl band. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, the, 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 this, I, I learned so much here on the Lou uh, well, Look up uh, the song Hate. They, they, they broke by doing covers on YouTube. That's really kind of how they built their following. And she does a version of uh, Barracuda where she plays guitar and sings it. And it's oh, all it's legit. Like, like she's, they're all legit. <laughs> and she's a little kid. They're under. I mean, they're like, all under twenty one. Still got like you could tell when you look at her. Like she still kind of got the baby fat. Like mm-hmm. she's like a real little kid. <clears throat> Absolutely killer. Let's, let's let's hope that those guys are able to do something. Well, I'm gonna keep it in the with the ladies because I want to make sure I mention this band. Um, these guys are. They may possibly be my favorite band at the moment. Um, <clears throat> Their new song, And So It Went, is just to die for. It's just amazing. I want to talk about, of course, the amazing Taylor Momsen. Uh, if those of you don't know who Taylor Momsen is... Watch The Grinch. Watch The Grinch, <laughs> right? She was little Cindy Lou Who. And uh, she grew uh-huh. up She grew up to be a real rock and roller. She was in the television teen drama on CW called Gossip Girl for a while. Uh, but she has, uh, you know, her heart's in rock and roll. And I mean... You know, there's certain people that come out of acting and try to go into music. And Keith and Lily, you guys it both. It doesn't work. All you know, time. and it's just like silly. But this uh, young lady, <laughs> you, she's the real deal, man. It's passion. It's you know energy. It's a real love for like for great classic bands like like uh, Black Sabbath and the Beatles. Just, just absolute. You could tell that that this band has utmost respect for the uh, the founding fathers of rock and are really ready to kind of like, you know, take it, uh, you know, uh, to a new place. So I absolutely love this band. If you haven't listened to them in a while, they've got a new song out. Go check them out. Taylor Momsen, uh, Pretty Reckless. The funny thing is that she was on an honorable mention on like Watch Mojo's list or something. She didn't even make the list. So what was that like one big tune they had? It was like real ant. Heaven like knows. Ant. That's it. That song there. I mean, if you can't sing along to that tune, you got issues. So yeah, that, that, I knew she was on some kind of like cheesy ass. Their, their new song has that quality yeah. to it too. It's got. It's very. It but yeah, she's definitely head. coming from that classic rock kind of badass vibe. You know, badass chick vibe. Want that? Uh, she. Dip, 
definitely has a cool voice and i think that you know that band probably has a you know hopefully a long future ahead of them yeah young lady 27 years old god bless her she's still super young yeah well lizzie hale's 37 <laughs> I, I feel better talking about Lizzie Hale because she's, I'm 39. She's, she's, you know, she's 10 years older than her. And it's funny because those two get a lot of like, there's a lot of like Lizzie Hale versus Taylor Momsen stuff. You know, we may have even done a podcast like that at one point, but, um, you know, they're, they're, they're covering two different air, uh, aspects of rock, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so who, I'm sorry. Who's next? Uh, Keith, go ahead. I'm going to go with a girl with a, some pipes. We're gonna go with a chick because I this is my first girl I dropped in there for y'all. So I'm gonna go with uh, Haley Williams from Paramore. She's on my list. D different. Okay. I think that she can do the popular stuff, but I also hear her do like uh, Misery Business, which is a little heavier, and she can sing more aggressively. Uh, she can do like I'm Into You and uh, Ain't It Fun stuff like that. But uh, I think that band is a rock band that actually came come out of tennessee which is you know maybe a rarity so i don't know how like together they are at this point it seems like they go through a lot of like member changes other than her and maybe like one or two other guys but it's just it's one of those things where the songs are catchy i think she has a cool look i think she you know has a good voice and it's like a voice that you can tell who it is mm -hmm. once you hear it and they're a band that you know hopefully will come back and do something you know i don't know last time they put out a record i mean kept what I, mean, I know some of the older stuff i guess so that's kind of where i'm at with it what's cool is uh, uh people will say that she has like more charisma than singers twice her age which is absolutely true she's all over that stage acting nuts and uh john uh mayer called her once the great orange hope for her singing and her orange hair <laughs> she go. had orange hair at the time so she's been praised by prominent musicians as well so she's and she's got that whole soprano four octave range going on there which is awesome and she's like like she could i think she's one of those ones could sing anything in my opinion yeah she definitely like uh doesn't look like a very you know big in stature person but she can she can belt it out pretty good yeah and if John Mayer, you know, John Mayer's had a lot of conquests. If he didn't sleep with her, then he probably will soon. <laughs> Someday. You ever, I mean, not to get on a side topic, but ever see John Mayer's, like, kind of conquest, his list of conquests, is oh, very yeah. impressive. Well, yeah. Because <clears throat> he sings love songs. <laughs> That's why. Love songs. Do you have another one? I have Lizzie Hale, since we talked about her Go already a little Go bit. Get uh, done. Um, they actually founded... Um, Hailstorm in 99, 1997, but did not release their first album until 2009. Um, they're known for their uh, completely near stop touring. They toured on, I mean, obviously until 2020. They were uh, constantly on the road. Um, she's also had guest appearances alongside Eric Church, Lindsey Sterling, Shinedown, Machine Gun Kelly, Blackstone Cherry, Seether, Adrenaline Mob, another one who can probably sing just about anything. She's got great stage presence, uh, beautiful girl. And uh, she also has an advice column called Ask Lizzie for Revolver Magazine. So there's that. Super talented. There's uh, um, she has an on and off again, very, very kind of casual relationship with a guitar player as well. And she likes girls. She's yes, openly, I did know that. She's openly walking on both sides of the street. So I respect that. Um, and if you have not seen it, it is not professionally. I bet you do there, everybody. <clears throat> it, it is not professionally filmed. I believe it's just a cell phone video, but her and Lita Ford doing Close My Eyes Forever. Mm. OMG, it's absolutely <laughs> kick ass. It's so freaking, I was like, whoa, and it's a ch shitty cell phone video. <laughs> and they like, they both sound amazing. Well, you know, there's yeah. no auto tuning. There's no fi going back. And oh, you mean real up. music? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, holy crap, you know, and they're both playing the double neck guitars. It's mm. just, oh, it's just so rock it and roll. It doesn't get better than that, really. Don't get no better than this. <laughs> yes, sonny. Uh, we are a little past, we're about 10 minutes past the halfway mark. Real quick, guys, check out, go to wolfscustoms.online. Get a, uh, talk to Chris Thunderwolf Dodson about a custom paint job for your musical instrument. Rockrageradio.com. Download the app. Uh, we are on Sundays right after uh, church. And Lily V6 is on Thursday nights at... 6 p.m. right on your drive home. But I do not go to church, so I just roll <laughs> over and listen to it. So, sorry, and, um, I'm not religious, Keith. Uh, <laughs> you know what, though? Neither I am, 
but next time you come here to LA, you're going to charge them dragging you. I'll take a nap. Sure. Uh, the, the, uh, the other thing I wanted to tell you guys real quick <laughs> is we are we are looking for reviews. So please go to uh, iTunes, Apple Music, whatever you call it, uh, and uh, search Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. There's a button there for uh, reviews and ratings. Give us a good rating. Write. You have to write a review. Take a if you sh- if you send me send your review to us like take a picture of it with your cell phone or screen cap send it to lou at lou lombardi music.com then uh you'll go into enter into a drawing in a month from now we're going to be drawing your name for a t-shirt so please uh, leave us reviews and of course uh our website is lou lombardi music.com <clears throat> for all the cool ludini stuff 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 stuffs and things stuffs and things um, okay, I was I was holding off on this because I thought that Keith might mention this person. Do you have any other women on your list? Do you have any other women on your list? I don't want to steal your thunder. It's okay, really. This is what this okay, is I'm, about, I'm not going to do this person. It is what it is. I'll, I'll hold off. and This might be an honorable mention. I have a lot of women on my list, but I, don't, I could probably have to go off script a little bit. I think that a good singer is a good singer. I'm not going to go or Aretha Franklin on your ass, who's the best female vocalist of all time, but I digress. Um, okay, well, let this, me, uh, let me, let me, I mean, jump. I have some, I have some, like, borderline rock singers I think that should get some. Okay, well, let me, uh, oh. let me, let me just throw this out because we did advertise it as this. <laughs> Corey Taylor. Yeah, you can like, take, We had Taylor Corey. Momsen. <laughs> so now it's Corey, Corey Taylor. <clears throat> all the of Taylors. Cor- yes, of course, you know, Stone Sour. Which was the first project in the early '90s, but then Slipknot, right? And then all the other stuff that he has done, and all the other projects that he has been involved with, and appearances on the Howard Stern Show, singing "Purple Rain" and "A Wicked Game" by Chris Isaac, and like just flooring everybody with his total vocal prowess. Just an amazing jaw-droppingly good singer for his verse. He, he, and he sounds good. He doesn't sound like, you know, rah, 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 Slipknot trying to sing Prince. Right. You know what I mean? Like, he <laughs> sounds it's like, I'm going to say he sounds like Prince, but he just sounds really, really great, very soul. He can be very, very soulful and very, very mellow, and he can also rock your face off. And, now, where, uh, is he, where is he doing this at? What you say? Where is he doing this at? So he, I can see it. Because I don't like. I didn't have him on my list because the fact is, I knew a that you were going to say him, and b I just don't know. I know Slipknot is the rah rah rah, you know, the Cookie Monster kind of vocal shit that I don't want to hear. So I'm going to give him. I know Stone Sour had like some radio hits, and I heard not, him sing like <laughs> regular voice stuff. But I I would like to hear him do like a cover tune. Pull, pull so, it I mean, up. Pull it up. It's ton. There are hundreds of the, but well, not hundreds, but many dozens of videos on YouTube with him singing uh, stuff like "Suspicious Minds" <laughs> and songs like that. And he sounds great. And not all of Slipknot's music is rah rah rah. Some of it breaks into like kind of like big melodies and anthem ish kinds of things as well. But you're right. Um, well, that goes to show you how much I listen to Slipknot. I mean, if I could get a gig bashing the shit out of a beer keg, I would, you know, but that's just the, <laughs> way, the whole other thing. And Stone Sour is a kick-ass band, too. Um, and he's, like, gone back and forth, and they've put out records. He's kind of got them back together and, and, and doing stuff like that. But uh, if you're if you're going like if you're like Keith and you're going like man I don't really hear it just 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 Google it or excuse me just sh- uh, search it on YouTube and I'm telling you you're gonna be like whoa this dude can freaking sing <laughs> so check it out and that's I wanted to just uh, throw that in there because we did talk about that uh, we're gonna go around the room a couple more times and then we're gonna wrap it up so Keith what do you got I got Miles Kennedy who's just a straight oh, up badass. Damn. I forgot. My, I know, how many, how many know I have this guy? I've been waiting for this guy. I had a more like one of them question marks on my list. I was like, they're, they're, one of them are definitely going to say this. With his work with Slash or whatever you want to do, him. the Snake yeah. Pit thing. The guy sounds like a throwback Robert Plant type singer. He has range for days. Uh, he looks cool. He has, I'm not a gay guy, but he looks cool. He has the rock star like vibe. He, uh, you can just, you know, it's, certain people are the five tool sort of like they used to say it about athletes. Oh, as a five tool, he got speed, you know, he got power, whatever. But he has it all. I mean, it's the, the type of person that comes across. The voice is good. The look is good. He's what else are you going to You can't really say anything bad about it. Yeah, uh, that's a great pick. I completely forgot about Miles Kennedy. He's one of my 
kind of like contemporary heroes. I just really he's like one of them guys. guys that I would put up for with the Rival Sons guys. Like yeah. that would sound oh, yeah. good. Like he would, he would sing with that. I mean, there's guys that just can sing their asses off that are still doing legit rock and roll that are unfortunately in today's age not going to be the top of the charts kind of guys. But then, I mean, when you're in a band with Slash, you're at least going to get some attention. But then again, if you know. If Miles Kennedy was singing for you know some bar band, he'd still get some attention. If he was on fucking Burberry Street, he would get some attention. Well, you know, you know I, mean? I mean, Alter Bridge is a great band too. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, that's just one of it's just it's those things where talent's talent, no matter where it's at. I mean, it's you know whether it's you know Miles Kennedy or uh, you know who else is talented nowadays, Cardi B. No, mm, don't but, even get me started. Uh, Lily, speaking of Cardi B. <laughs> <laughs> Carla Harvey instead of Cardi B from the Butcher Babies, I would choose. Oh, good one. <laughs> um, what a great one. She is uh, now. I and I'm speaking of more earlier Butcher Babies. I'm not necessarily a fan of their newer stuff, but their the early stuff was fantastic. Um, she's a super cool lady. She's uh, been a nude model. She has a degree in mortuary science. She's been a funeral director. I like her already. I know, and she's a cartoonist or not a cartoonist. I guess a comic book artist, but also. She fulfilled her dream of touring in a live band as a musician, which is what she does now. And her influences are Pantera, Slayer, Metallica, Black Sabbath, and Iron Maiden, which you can totally hear in her voice, yeah. um, as, as well as the plasmatics. But she's also uh, stated in an interv- interview that her musical heroes are Slash and Jimi Hendrix, because as a kid, she used to get made fun of listening to that stuff. And um, growing up in the Detroit area, and because she, and uh, she just was happy to see African Americans playing the music that she loved made her feel better and made her do that little push into the uh, heavy metal scene and she's also influenced by horror movies so this lady is like basically my wait she's, sp- she's black likes rock and roll and likes horror movies that's my wife that's my next wife but wait till my wife gets home I'm kicking her to fuck out and we're gonna Google her do you know what she looks like she's hot as hell no I do I know but I, <laughs> well, I will now and I'll probably look at her later and do she's dirty things both but of those other. ladies in the butcher baby. I do like Heidi too but I'm more geared towards Carla she's like my spiritual twin but she's influenced by the Texas Chainsaw Massacre House of a Thousand Corpses oh, Devil's oh Rejects oh my god I'm, this, this is so arousing I can't even take it she's also been in uh, porn movies so Oh, what? This is a fucking trifecta of all things. I wish this was a horse race because I'm betting on all. <laughs> Look her up. I'm telling you. <laughs> it's a horse race. Jesus Christ. Carla I Harvey. Can't, I can't even concentrate anymore. I have to probably leave now because this this is going to be way too much for me to handle. And while I do Carla love Heidi. Harvey. Carla Harvey, you, did you see me out there? I have nothing to offer you but my <laughs> my deepest love. And your wit. And my wit, which is usually <laughs> mediocre at best, but I'll try to up my game for you, darling. <laughs> I can't wait till you Google her and then tell me about it. <laughs> well, I will. It's coming. Guaranteed. I'll have a full report on Carl. Okay. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> um, uh, real quick, I just want to throw this out, and I know I, I, I hope that Keith and I can still be friends after this. Um, I don't know. Maybe Keith loves this band. I, I just think this is a band Keith would hate. We should play that game. A band bands we think Keith would hate. I kind of feel like that's not a good game. <laughs> um, but um, this is David. Is that why I say his name? Draymond. Draymond. David Draymond from um, Disturbed. Just it like uh, yeah, I mean I know. Yeah, unfortunately, I, Lou, I'll have, I'm going to go and I'll probably wipe my tears later. But I had him on my list because I, not only do I think he has okay. a unique voice, but I think it's like. He's coming from a different place, which he said this himself, where am I going to go out and like listen to every freaking Disturbed tune? No. But it's the fact where he said instead of coming from some like more aggressive kind of way that most metal singers do, he comes from more like a reggae kind of vibe. If you listen to his, his voicings, his like his you know intonation and his voice, his tonality, he's like actually could probably just well sing you know a disturbed tune and then go sing the fucking bob marley song so i mean he said okay. that himself in an interview where he comes from a reggae standpoint so i just didn't know if these guys would be like too commercial for you or something um i don't or, like or the band. i mean i'm in a lot of bands i don't like but you know yeah. we know that <clears throat> but uh but i mean just he, he can do a lot and um sing ballads like the sound of silence and things like that. i mean just like you know, he can go. He can. He, he is very. He's a very versatile singer, and I think, it's like as Keith has said, he's sort of proved that. You know, he's not your typical metal guy. I think he's an amazing voice. Whether you are down with the sickness or not, <laughs> uh, you had to work at it, didn't you? you son of a bitch. 
Brumpa. Thanks. I'll be here all week. Try the Ville. Uh, okay, <laughs> we're, we're gonna go around the room here. We're gonna do like one more. Oh, for fuck's sakes. <laughs> okay, sorry. Go ahead, Keith. Chris Cornell. He's the best goddamn singer in the last forty years, if you ask me. But that's a whole. I digress. Yeah, he still was doing up to his death, unfortunate departure. Uh, don't kill it. Don't you know? Don't kill yourself. I mean, it's just one of the things. But it's that. It, that's a whole other PSA I can do some other time. But whether it's work with Audio Slave, Soundgarden, or solo work, the dude has an amazing voice. He seemed like a cool, cool guy. I didn't know him, but I mean, I like his voice. Still, to me, rings through. He's the modern day Robert Plant to me, and he's the fucking god. Oh wow! Well, there's god. that. That you know. <laughs> I said he's a god, not the god. All right. what, do, what do you got, Lily? Um, this one, a lot of people aren't going to know by the name, but they may know by his YouTube channel. It's Pellick, uh, P-E-L-L-E-K. Um, for, since 2010, he's been a singer, songwriter, and actor. He's actually uh, known for his vocal range, which is four octaves, and he has millions of followers on YouTube. Millions of followers. He is known for doing this song, um, This Is Halloween. It's a whole thing, every part. On YouTube uh, from A Nightmare Before Christmas. and uh, But he's gone through extensive touring in Europe. He's in movies. He does video game singing. Um, he was in the band Dragon Force for a minute. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he can sing in all the languages. Um, he's Dang. just super talented. Um, he's, he's done singing for Power Rangers. Acted in Power Rangers. Uh, Magic the Gathering. Kind of a little nerdy. But his voice is amazing, and he literally did every part in that song, and I was just, like, blown away. And that's what made me look him up, and his other stuff is just as amazing. So everybody should just take the time to look him up. It's like Steve Terryberry. He's a total nerd, but he's a demon on the guitar. He's, like, insane. <laughs> a total nerd. Um, but that's cool. When I'm gone, I want people to think of me that way. He <laughs> um, was a total nerd, but he could at least play it. I'm going to yeah. gonna bring – this is the last one I'm going to mention. And um, – this band is kind of different. I mean, I, I try to bring a few uh, different uh, elements in to the show tonight. And this is uh, Brittany Howard of Alabama. What? Of Alabama what? Shakes. I, this, I'm hanging the hell up because this is some ghoul shit tonight because I had her on my list and I didn't even bring her up because I was like, maybe it's not rock and roll enough. That chick kicks ass in that band. Absolutely, awesome. dude. And the band kicks ass and she is... Um, she could really fucking sing, and then she plays a solid rhythm guitar too. She's um, when I first heard them, and I didn't know who it was. I thought it was some Steve Marriott track that, like, you know, yeah, she's you killing, know, she's she has killer, that man. kind of she has that kind of thing going on with her voice. Um, but th- this this voice is like, guys, I'm serious. If you've not heard Alabama, I understand that like. It isn't heavy, but it's rock. I mean, it's got that kind of uh, Americana kind of rock kind of thing going on. Bl- very blues based. You might want you just just check it out if you're unfamiliar with them and just listen to uh, Britney's voice. <laughs> it's it, it, it's like jaw on the floor. Like, what the hell is that? It's insane. It's so good. Anybody, anybody would like them. Anybody? There, there, but there's like a lot of artists that I you know have, would have on my list, and especially female artists that I really, really have admire, and some aren't with us anymore. But there's like that aren't maybe you're so much heavy rock, but there's like female artists like like Amy Winehouse, like uh, Bjork, uh, Fiona Apple, Tori Amos that I think are fucking amazing singers, but they might not be for everybody. But PJ Harvey, these these vocalists are killing, man. Like, they could sing whatever you want them to, but they just happen to have... And what was unique about all those people is the fact where they all have a very... their own independent, unique sound, which is awesome. Cool. Excellent. Um, any uh, <clears throat> any any comments you want to mention? No, but Ron Keel liked the podcast. Ron, we love you, Ron. <laughs> Ron, you should... Uh, you should, Since your name is Ron Keel, you should look into getting into the band Keel. Right, that's the same guy, right? That doesn't that the, the singer. That yeah. was the joke I was making. Sorry, he tried. I tried. <laughs> it fell flat, but it's okay. Sorry, sorry, Ron. You had, a, <laughs> but you know, you had a you had a good career, though, buddy. Um, real uh, so so this day in in music, we have some interesting ha- a thing uh, happened. Um, 
let's see here. The Beatles. No, not the Beatles. Let's talk about George Harrison. This is the film, the concert of uh, concert for Bangladesh, featuring George Harrison, Bob Dylan, Eric Clapton, and a whole bunch of other people. Um, this debuted in New York. The concert raised $243,418.51 for Bangladesh Relief. Um, this in 1972. And they uh, round it up to the whole dollar. Yeah, I know. I hope they use that 51 cents to buy uh, some candy. <laughs> well, in, in 70, whatever, that money went a lot farther. Former, uh, on this day in 1985, former Creedence Clearwater Revival frontman John Fogarty went to number one on the U.S. album chart with his third solo album, Centerfield. Uh, and this was a huge record. I mean, just was like... It was inescapable, especially in Pittsburgh. DVE played. Yeah, man, that 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 title, that title track written about my favorite sport, baseball, and he just really went through the whole lineage of baseball. Yeah, uh, first album in nine years after he decided to take a long break from the music business because of legal battles with his record company. <laughs> <clears throat> on this day, let's have a little romantic news. On this day, in 1985, Billy Joel married Christy Brinkley. Aww. Divorced. Give in 19... one up, one up for the ugly guys. <laughs> Uh, they married uh, on a boat uh, alongside the Statue of Liberty, uh, but they divorced in 1993, and he married another supermodel after that. Um, Billy Joel. I know. Uh, this day in 91, REM scored their first UK number one album with their seventh album, Out of Time, featuring the singles Losing My Religion Shiny ha- and Shiny Happy People. Losing My Religion won two Grammy Awards and six MTV Awards. Ooh. Wow. Remember that when he started taking off all the t-shirts? Remember that? <laughs> no. He used a condom, and the next one was like, you know, vote. The next one was like, hey, I'm gay, and then it was a whole other thing. Okay. Uh, this this guy is a, always a bit of a, a kind of walking contradiction. On this day in 2011, The Who's Pete Townsend told Uncut Magazine that he regretted ever forming the band The Who. What would I have done differently? I would never have joined a band, even though I am quite good gang member and good trooper on the road. I'm bad at creative collaboration. Well, at least he's honest. Well, you know, I don't know. There's some people might say, nah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but that was Pete. You know, Pete is Pete. You can't just, you know, you got to go with Pete. You know, you can't. What can you do? You can't really argue with him. You can't, yeah. If you're going to talk, if you're going to talk to him, just speak up because he can't hear. <laughs> um, happy birthday. To a guy we talked a lot about last, last week, week, Rick Ocasek. Rick Ocasek was born this day in 1944. Rick Ocasek, of course, uh, the lead's primary lead singer, uh, alongside Ben Orr, of course, of the of the Cars, with hits like "Good Times," "Roll," "Best Friends," "Girl," "Drive," and and whatnot. Just about I can't believe it. The, 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 no definitive winner in that that clash, we'll say. Yeah, no, nah, it was my, split. It was split. By the, have, by the fans, I, too. I really, I, really, I really enjoyed the Bunny Carlos uh, YouTube documentary, but that thing was too long, man. I just shut that off. After, well, I can't keep my attention that long. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> that's... two and a half hours long. I watched the fucking Gone with the Wind three times before that thing was Wow. Like. Happy birthday, this day in 1953. The lovely and talented Yvette Marie Stevens, better known as Shaka Khan, uh, lead vocalist in front of a uh, uh, vocal point of the 1970s funk band Rufus... Khan was the first R&B artist to have a crossover hit featuring rapper, uh, featuring a rapper with "I Feel for You" in 1984. She's collaborated with Ry Cooter, uh, Robert Palmer, Ray Charles, Quincy Jones, and uh, m- many, many, many others. Also did a cameo in the Blues Brothers. Yes. <laughs> this is the guy you're going to know. That you're Not bad. Keith. You're when I say this, you're going to be like, awesome. Born this day in 1971, American session drummer Abe Laboriel Jr. Worked with Paul McCartney for many years, as well as many other artists, including Shakira. And you know what? Not to, inter- not to interrupt you, but he still works with Paul McCartney. He's a drummer to this day. <laughs> so there you are. So I, I knew that we'd get you uh, get to go. But what do you think? You know, Abe and his and his father is a famous musician as well. His, his father was the top session bassist. Like, yeah. you're going to need a bass line laid down in the L.A., you know, music scene and the sessions in L.A. Let's call Abe Senior, and Abe Junior is just a drummer, and he has played with Paul McCartney for years. But he's also has a very cool drum track on a song. Maybe all you metalheads don't know, but he is on the Vanessa Carlton song 
mi- million miles or some shit like Seriously? that. He sounds great. On, he he sounds great on that song. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I, and he's probably on a lot of other songs, but that's the song that stuck out to me because his drum part in that. Whether you like that song or not, I which I don't. But I mean, it's the fact where his drum part makes the song to me. It stands out because he's playing some really hip, like really cool shit. You know. I swear, I hear that song in Walgreens every time I go in there. Um, you guys have been listening to Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. Go to lulombardimusic.com. Give us a review on iTunes. Send a, a photo, pic, screen cap, whatever, to Lou, uh, at lulombardimusic.com so we can enter you into the contest. Um, thank you, Wolf's Customs, wolfscustoms.online, Rock Rage Radio. Go to rockrageradio.com. Lily? My show is Hot Licks with Lily Six, Thursdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Go to rockrageradio.com or just download the app to your phone for free, Rock Rage Radio. And Keith, any final words, parting thoughts? Uh, you want to talk about your band? Anything you want to say before we wrap up? We're going to be playing a gig this Friday at the Poor House in uh, Metairie slash Jefferson Highway, Louisiana area. So if not that anybody out there is going to be in this area, but if you are, come to the Poor House. And we'll have a good time, and you know it'll be uh, a COVID-free jam. Hopefully, you'd poop your pants if I showed up. <laughs> it would be freaking. Awesome. I would. I would. All of a sudden, you see all these pictures on Instagram of Lily hanging. If, out. If, if, if you actually are going to, let me know because I'll have to clean off the bed. Oh. <laughs> in, okay. in the guest bedroom. Oh, I see. No, I won't be, but I, I will surprise you. One time would be fun. <laughs> um, all right, guys, you've been listening to Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. Um, we go live every Tuesday. On uh, all the places, uh, thank you guys so much for the comments and everything. We do, we do love it. Don't forget to get uh, go to iTunes and do the thing and give us a review. And we're gonna just catch you guys all on the next Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. Have a great week, guys. Take care now. We forgot Dave Grohl. Dave Grohl, you're a kick- Dave Grohl. killer singer. Dave Grohl. Dave Grohl. See you guys. Take care. Now.